Saturn's iconic rings have fascinated astronomers and space enthusiasts for centuries. However, Saturn is not the only planet in the solar system with rings, let alone the universe. In fact, all four giant gas planets in our solar system have rings to some degree. Jupiter's rings are faint and made up of small particles. Uranus has a system of 13 narrow, dark rings. Neptune also has a set of rings that are much fainter than those of Saturn and are composed of small particles of dust and ice. But the real fun starts when we go out of the solar system, beyond which there have been several exoplanets discovered with rings. One of them is this monster, J1407b. This planet has such a massive ring system that even Saturn looks like a dwarf in front of it. 200 times larger than Saturn, the planet's rings are estimated to be around 640 million kilometers in diameter, making them larger than the distance between the Earth and the Sun. And unlike Saturn's rings, which are composed of icy particles, J1407b's rings are made up of much larger and more diverse particles. The rings are thought to be composed of rocks, dust, and ice, with some particles estimated to be as large as a kilometer in diameter. While learning more about J1407b will definitely open up doors to understanding the nature of these mighty giant planets, our topic today is not exactly about it. What we are instead going to dive into is this. Look at this image. A dwarf planet lurking at the edge of the solar system. And notice the ring around it. Something put it up there, because otherwise, this is not possible. At least, not according to our understanding of planetary rings formation. Orbit. Beyond the blue. This is the Kuiper Belt, a junkyard of icy objects left over from the solar system's formation. Cold, dark and mysterious, this region holds so many secrets that understanding it will provide us with many answers about the formation and evolution of our star system. But studying it is not that easy, given its distance from the Earth. Only a few spacecrafts have flown through the Kuiper Belt, and what we have found there have raised more questions than answering the ones we were already asking. Before we move any further, we need to know what the Roche limit is. Okay, so the Moon's gravity pulls on the Earth, but one side of the Earth is closer to the Moon. So the Moon pulls on that side harder than the other side. This results in a tidal force, which compresses one side of the Earth and expands the other. As the Earth spins, we experience a high tide, and then a low tide. This happens twice a day, and they happen for every celestial body, not just the Earth. Basically, what happens is that the tidal force is trying to stretch and pull apart the Moon. But every Moon has its own gravity, and its gravity keeps it together. So a quick recap, tidal forces are pulling it apart, and their gravity is holding it together. If you keep bringing a moon closer to a planet, the tidal force gets stronger and stronger, until they are so strong that they overcome the gravity holding the moon together and rip it apart. The point of distance at which this happens is called the Roche limit. Named after Eduard Roche who discovered it, in simple terms, if you stay inside the Roche limit, you get rings, outside it, you get moons. Now. This is where things go bonkers. A dwarf planet called Kwawa, lurking at the outermost boundaries of the solar system, has astronomers scratching their heads, as the sheer size of its newly discovered ring practically defies explanation. While Kwawa is only about half the size of Pluto, its faint ring system blows the current theorized maximum on ring sizes out of the water. The Roche limit for an object is about two and a half times its planetary radii. However, in the case of Quaua's ring, it's over seven. Though it is impossible to have rings that far out, this Kuiper Belt object is a real challenge for theoretical physics and a nightmare to our planetary rings models. 
How is it that instead of forming into a moon, Kwawa has rings around it? While discovering the ring is a feat in itself, explaining its size could prove very difficult. The simplest explanation here is that the ring is young and hasn't had time to reconstitute. Or, maybe, it could be an object, yet unseen, whose gravity is hindering the formation of moonlets. But in all likelihood, scientists are speculating that it may just be time to revisit the Roche limit. What do you have to say? And if you think this is bizarre, wait, because the Kuiper Belt has a lot of other mysteries enveloped in its cold heart, presenting Garakoff, a trans-Neptunian object, located in the Kuiper Belt. This is of particular interest, because it is one of the most primitive and well-preserved objects in the solar system, dating back to the formation of the solar system over 4.6 billion years ago. There is also a mystery surrounding Arakoth's unusual shape and surface features. When the New Horizons spacecraft flew past it in January 2019, it revealed that the object is actually two smaller objects that have come together to form a larger, elongated shape. The two objects appear to have gently collided and stuck together, rather than violently smashing into each other. But what baffled scientists about Arakoth is the lack of impact craters on its surface. This suggests that the object has remained largely unchanged since its formation and has not been impacted by other objects in the Kuiper Belt. Additionally, Arakoth's surface is remarkably smooth, without any significant features like mountains or valleys. This has piqued the interests of scientists around the world. And while Arakoth is very interesting, my personal favorite is 15810 Aron. Viewers of this channel know that this mysterious Kuiper Belt object is straight from the pages of science fiction. A quick Google search will tell you that Aron is a Kuiper Belt object, a large rock that orbits round outside the orbit of Neptune. But, is it a rock? In April 2016, NASA's New Horizons spacecraft reached the Kuiper Belt. After capturing its first target, Pluto, the probe turned its sight towards a large object on a strange trajectory. Yes, we are talking about 15810 Aron, named after the Celtic god of death, war and the other world. Now, why is it so special, you ask? Well, most of the objects in the Kuiper Belt are made of rock and ice. But Aron doesn't move like any of the catalogued objects in the belt. This has made scientists question if it is made of something completely different, something much stronger, because it's rotating so fast that centrifugal force should have torn it apart. How could something spin so fast and stay intact? Scientists believe that the fast spin is creating artificial gravity, and gravity would be the most vital thing needed for long interstellar travel. You cannot have astronauts floating around the spacecraft while traversing hundreds of light years. This probed the New Horizon to take a closer look at the object. And here is when things turned strange. As the probe tried to get a closer look, suddenly, all of its sensors went dead, transmissions cut off. It was as if someone was monitoring our presence. Someone or something that did not want us to know about them. But just before losing contact, NASA observed that Aron was spinning like a large spaceship would. Now, you can say that it might have been a technical glitch. But here is when things get crazier. Only when New Horizon moved away from Aron, it suddenly came back to life as if nothing had ever happened in the first place. Now I don't know about you but this really gives me goosebumps. And one thing is for sure. We have got a long way to go in order to understand our solar system, let alone exoplanets and other star systems. The universe is more mysterious than we could possibly imagine, and it starts right here in the Kuiper Belt. Meanwhile, NASA's New Horizons is still healthy, and should be operational for years, as it explores the icy bodies at our solar system's edge. And maybe, in the coming years we will make an extraordinary discovery, but what do I know?
orbit. Beyond the blue, 